Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we're going to take a look at the all new 2023 Mini Cooper Convertible. Huge shout out to Carolina Auto Direct for providing this vehicle for me today. Check out their website, that link is down in the description. So this convertible is finished off in satellite gray and we'll go over the MSRP once we go over all the specs and features and get this out on the road. So let's start off with what powers this Mini because there are two different engine options. This model has the 1.5 liter twin power turbo three cylinder engine. It's paired to a seven speed automatic transmission pumping out 134 horsepower, 162 pound feet of torque sent to the front wheels. This weighs in right around 3000 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in just over eight seconds with a top speed of 165. It also has a fuel capacity of 11.6 gallons. You'll expect to see around 29 miles per gallon in the city, 38 out on the highway. This also has a wheelbase of 98.2 inches. Its overall length is 152.2. It has a width of 75.9 and a height of 55.7 inches. As we move on to the exterior styling for this Mini Cooper, let's start off with the grill that you can see right in the middle. Now, unlike most vehicles, I wouldn't call this a traditional grill because there's a lot of body work with some small cutouts in the upper and lower section and then some trim and some gloss black to give it a nice look for this middle section here. So it does have a good vibe to it. There's also some air inlets on both sides to help improve with that aerodynamics. And there is some plastic in the lower section there, but you will get a lot of cooling to that twin power turbo engine. Now this also has LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals. And you'll notice too, for the Mini Cooper, the hood actually has cutouts for those. So when you open up the hood, that exposes the headlights even more, which this is a funky uh, quirk to see about the Mini Coopers. That badge is right in the middle too. And then there's some subtle lines that run down the hood. Now, as we work our way to the side, this has a set of 16 inch wheels. They are finished off in gloss black with that multi-spoke design to them. You will notice more of that plastic for the fender arches, as well as the lower side skirt there. There's also a trim piece just behind that front tire. This has body colored side mirrors. And then as you can tell with the top down, it has a cool almost matchbox style design to it. It is a small car, very fun though at the same time. So if you're looking for that top down experience and you want a small four seater, this is a perfect option to go with. Now with the soft top all the way up, you'll notice that it has the British flag running throughout it. And you can also have just the front section open. So while this is a soft top convertible, you can actually have the sunroof open and then you can choose to further put the rest of the roof down. So it's a pretty cool combo to see that for this. Now for the rear, this has the backup camera, a nice set of LED taillights, and you will see the British flag in those as well. There's parking sensors down below, and then you'll notice more of that plastic trimming, which brings it in nicely with the rest of the exterior. Now we can work our way to the cargo space now. So as you can tell with the soft top down, you don't lose any space for your cargo. Now this opens almost like a tailgate would for a pickup truck. And you can see with some of my items currently in there, there's actually a decent amount of space with those back seats up. Now you can actually pull on these tabs and fold both of those seats down. Where you can see it's not the most flat surface, but if you have some larger items and you need to place those through, you have a really nice area to do so. And then from here, I can easily put those back up so you can get a sneak peek at that interior. But it's pretty cool to see that versatility and the soft top is so small that it doesn't hinder any of that storage. So it's pretty cool that it doesn't take up all of that and that it's very easy to close that back up. Now, as we work our way to the interior, you can lock and unlock this, of course. So there's that one button on the door handle, which is finished off in chrome. And then for the interior, it has a nice design to it with this white leather. There's also some brush trim just above that. We have lock and unlock, which is also on the release handle itself. So that is unique for Mini Cooper. We have one speaker, a little bit of storage, and then all of the window controls. You will see Mini down on the door sill there. And then we have the leather seats, which are manual adjusting. So all of those adjustments are down on the side with the bar up front, so you can slide this forwards and backwards. But let's work our way to the back seat where I can just pull on that tab and push that seat forwards. At five foot 10 with the roof down, obviously it is easy to enter and exit. Now there's one cup holder, so your backseat passengers would have to share that. 
a little bit of storage on both sides too. And then as far as headroom goes, at five foot 10, I actually have two or three inches above my head. Now I would want to adjust this uh, headrest here because it is in my way, but honestly, with the top up, I could be comfortable back here, going around the city, probably not a long road trip or anything like that, but you have usable and functional back seats for additional people if you need that, or you can use this for extra storage space, which is the best of both worlds for the size. And as you can tell, I currently have the back up with the sunroof open. So I have never seen a soft top where you have that combo. So you can put it halfway basically, or put it down the rest of the way. And you can see the flag there covering the entire upper section. So as we work our way to these front seats now, it's a low car, so it is easy to enter and exit. We have solid leather for this entire steering wheel, the mini badge right in the middle. Now on this left side, these are all the cruise control settings. On the right side, there's Bluetooth and voice commands along with volume for the radio. And then we have a few others to go through for the gauge cluster there. So let's fire up this Mini Cooper with my foot on the brake. That toggle is actually right in the middle, which is pretty neat to see. So all I have to do is hold that down. This will fire up. And coming back to the gauge cluster, you'll notice that it has an oval design to it with the tack on the left side, on the right side, you can see the fuel level, and then right in the middle is miles per hour, and then a few other icons surrounding that. Now, these buttons over on the right side just adjust the radio, so that way you can go through that and basically have all of your presets set up. So there's no other info to go through within that gauge cluster. Very simple, it gives you everything that you need. Now, on this left side of the steering wheel, you will see all the headlight adjustments, uh, parking light and dimmer switches for the gauges. There's also one air vent and a pretty cool trim piece on both sides of that gauge cluster, leading all the way to the massive clock-like design for the middle. This is not new for Mini Cooper, but you will see on the upper section, we have a shortcut to the intelligent safety, so that way you can go through all of these this information and set that up the way that you would like to. Now this is a touchscreen system, so you'll notice on this left side, you can quickly get into your media, go through all of that. You can go into your phone when you have that paired. There's also mini, so just by clicking on that, you can go through all of these various settings just to set this up the way that you would like to. And then there's a few apps just underneath that that you can go through as needed. So it's a pretty simple, straightforward system. You'll notice that a lot of these controls, like the intelligent safety, come out of BMW. So of course, Mini Cooper is partnered with BMW. And then on this home screen too, I can even swipe over and look at some more information here. So you have My Mini, you have Mini Connected, you can go through your radio, all of these stats for this, even some notifications. So it's nice that you can go through the home screen there with that touchscreen system. You'll notice some graphics on both sides as well. And then power for the radio is right in the middle along with volume. You have tuning and all the presets just underneath that. Now below that, we have the toggles for all the climates, very laid, uh, laid out very nicely. Temperature are on both sides. And then we have fan speed and a few other controls. This even has heated seats. So those icons are on both sides. We have some more defrosters, recirks right in the middle. And then on both sides of the engine start stop, we have the engine start stop feature as well as traction control. You can just toggle that with both of these. Now at the very bottom, you will notice there's a 12 volt along with a USB, two cup holders and a little bit of storage. And then for the shifter, if I just pull the release on the left side, push it forwards for reverse, just like a BMW, a BMW shifter you will see that backup camera with these sensors on that left side. Drive is going to be all the way to the back and you can even pop it over and shift using the shifter. And then park is located at the top there. Now behind that, there's actual uh, buttons for that center infotainment system. So if I click on menu, I can pull that up. I can also click on map or you can go through the Apple CarPlay to sync your phone. I can get into the music as well as getting to back to the Apple CarPlay there. So it's nice that you can use those controls if you don't wanna use it as a touchscreen system. There's the rotary dial as well. We have the manual parking brake, which is actually kind of in the way of the armrest here. So if you wanna use that, you need to have the center armrest up because it will not go down all the way with that in the way there. So an interesting design to see, but for the center armrest, you do have a little bit of storage and then you can also flip that up 
and lock it into a few different positions just depending on your comfort for the day. Now on the passenger side, there's the glove box, which gives you all that information or all that area for that information. And then for the top, I'm going to close the front section of it the rest of the way. There's that toggle up top where the dome lights are also on both sides. There's a call button as well. So you can get another look at this soft top design with all the windows down, which you can put up and down with the push of one button. So there's no back buttons for the back two windows, but it's nice that you can do that even for the size. And as far as visibility goes, it's pretty easy to see all around. As we set off now behind the wheel for the Mini Cooper convertible, this has an MSRP at just over $33,000. So it's not all that expensive, but it is a small car, not a whole lot of options, but you get the convertible. So if you're looking to get into a convertible and you want a Mini Cooper, it's not all that bad. I would, I would say it's a little bit expensive for what you're getting, especially having the smaller engine, but some people just want the convertible. You want a, a cute little car that you can drive around town. You can have three other people in here and it's simple, it will get you from point A to point B. You have that BMW reliability as well. Let's pop it into the manual setting now for this smaller engine from second gear. Here we go. I mean, it's what you'd expect from a three cylinder like this, but like I mentioned earlier, you can go with the two liter four cylinder for the convertible. There's also some other engine options for some of the other Mini Cooper sportier style cars that you can get. So just depending on what you would like out of your Mini Cooper, and that's pretty much it. It's very comfortable to drive. With this soft top too, there's really no wind noise and road noise. I've been in a lot of convertibles lately, and convertibles used to have that, you know, that raggy soft top, very windy, flappy maybe, something like that. This one feels very nice. There's no wind noise or road noise. It is a very nice place to be. And if you want the convertible, you're not sacrificing anything to drive this even out on the highway. Very comfortable to drive. And then when you're ready, you can open just the sunroof. And now you have that open top experience. You can put all the windows down if you'd like to as well and get that cross breeze going and just cruise driving your Mini. Now, if I come to a slower speed, I would assume probably around 30 miles an hour or so, I should be able to do the rest of the top. We have to go under 20. All right, so 20 miles an hour it is for the Mini Cooper. And so in a matter of seconds, maybe 10 seconds if that, we are ready to go with that top-down experience. Now I'm going to put the windows up just for the audio purposes, so hopefully you can hear me perfectly. The soft top is visible through the rear view mirror there. It doesn't really hinder visibility. I do have a, a Kia behind me. It's a little bit hard to see out of the back glass, but you have the side mirrors, of course. And we are up to speed. It's a peppy little engine to get you up and moving. And I can see the appeal to this. If you want a small car, maybe you live in the city, you're not looking for something big, but you do want a convertible. This is going to be so easy to park, parking lot situations wherever you are. You're really not going to have to worry about where to put it. It has a small footprint to it. And so with it in sport mode from second gear, here we go. The shifts are what you would expect for a vehicle like this. You're probably not really ever going to use them, but if you need to shift, get a little bit more uh, power from a lower gear, you have the option to do that, which is nice if you need to pass or anything like that. But with that top-down experience, it is nice. It's definitely comfortable to drive. And then once we get to that 20 mile an hour mark, we can put this back up in a matter of seconds, as long as we stay under 20. 
It's gonna take a little bit longer to put back up since, oops, got a little bit fast there. Since we do have to put that back the rest of the way. So before I just had to do the back of it, but we are ready to go. And it's that easy. So it's nice that you don't have to be in park in order to adjust the top. Now, one thing that I will say, it feels like it echoes in here a little bit. I'm not sure how that's going to come across on camera, but to me, it feels like I can I can hear my echo inside of here. So it's, it's a little bit different feeling from other vehicles that I've been in, but it is a smaller vehicle. You know, there's a lot of plastics here. It's, it's well refined, don't get me wrong, uh, but it is more economy style focused um, with some plastic here and there. And, it's, it's put together nicely for, for what you're paying for this car. It's what you would expect. It just feels a little echoey, um, which is interesting to see. But aside from that, I think this is a cool option. I'm not around Mini Coopers that often. I know there's a huge following for the uh, Mini Cooper uh, groups and uh, what they have to offer. It's a fun little car. I can see the appeal to it if this is all that you are looking for. But I think that is going to wrap it up for the 2023 Mini Cooper Convertible. Once again, a huge shout out to Carolina Auto Direct for providing this smaller size car for me today. Check out their website, that link is down below. Give the video a huge thumbs up, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads, and I will see you all in the next video. Awesome.